Hey, welcome back to the show. Uh, today we are talking about the January 2025 release from Crowdin. We have two videos here, one about Crowdin AI, which is a separate video you can find here. And in this video, we will talk about Vector Memory App, the Whited Words reports, Crowdin Store updates, and a couple of other features. So let's dive into it. Andre Vector Database to improve AI translation quality. What's this all about? This is a small app that you first need to reinstall from the marketplace. You will find the link in the blog. Also, you can find it here. Uh, we just follow steps. Once it's installed, we will see it at organization level okay. in here. And then we can start creating stores. Uh, the recommendation from developers would be that you create a store per language. It's not a good idea to upload all translations that you have to the same store. So store is a folder or like say some category where you okay. keep, it's a small storage where you can upload all your previously localized documents where we can see uh, how they are translated, what style you used. And then um, when we uploaded everything to every store, you can have as many of them as needed. You can create, you can go to AI uh, section, create a new prompt. And now we create a new pre-translation prompt. Let's say it will be AI something, any name, um, we choose the provider, we choose the model. And finally, we select the mode. So earlier we had only basic and advanced mode. Now we have a vector memory mode where we can specify, where we can see in the script, in the prompt, what, uh, what's included and Relevant docs is a part where we mention these documents. So when we talk to AI and we will be asking AI to translate certain language, AI will be provided not only with the prompt that we have here, but also with previously translated documents. This way, it should manage to produce better translations. And these documents do not need to be in the translation memory. They course. don't introducing weighted word counts. So this concept is a pretty standard concept in our industry where we use it to, to put all the word counts in a fuzzy match report in one single number. So there's repetitions, there are fuzzy matches in different types from the translation memory, and we put everything in one single number to estimate how long it might take a translator to translate this or to estimate our time in general to process everything. Andre, show us where can we find this one on the, in, the inter, in the interface? Yeah, sure. It's here. Um, weighted words are part of cost estimate and translation cost report. So for instance, here we can see I did some, I ran the report for German. System already sees that it has um, uh, we have some TM matches here and in total we have 131 words, but because of this translation memory matches that we have everything, weighted word amount is 112. So it, it simply indicates that we will spend much less efforts on translating this content because we won't need to do everything from scratch, but the system will help us with these existing TM matches as the matches, we will translate it faster. That's that the main goal. Weighted words. Excellent. Yeah. And where can we see it? So we find it in the report session under cost estimate. And do we see it cost. also in translation costs? We do. Yeah. Yes. So when it's generated, when we, after we finished all translations here, we can put in some rates as usual and weighted words will be also listed here. So we can also see how many words were translated in total and we estimate. So we will show, of course, total amount of words that were translated, but also we will show more, more these weighted words. So it will be smaller, of course, because 
some words were translated using translation memory, for example. So then weighted words amount will be smaller. Is to give people a time metrics to say how long it eventually will take for a translation or looking back, how long should it have taken for our teams to translate everything? Great. Okay, next on our list is Crowd in Store. You have added Grok and DeepSeek for localization. What's behind it? Did you did the pressure was so big that you had to go for DeepSeek? Yes, yes. There were many requests because when there is something new, you want to test it. So we've got some requests and currently we have DeepSeek. You, you will find both in Marketplace. You will see instructions. Just a small insight that say Croc app. Currently it's an app, but hopefully next week it will become like a native provider. So when you go to AI providers list without installing any apps, it will be listed here in the list. Good, good. Anything people need to understand or know or take care of when we talk about DeepSeek, there was a lot of hassle in the news about privacy issues. Can you talk about anything of that? We did an uh, interview with uh, Konstantin Draj just now and um, and we will were discussing the impact on, on companies for using DeepSeek as a API solution. What is your take on, on DeepSeek? Well, I can only say that indeed many users wanted it, but currently most users are quite hesitant to try it, at least at this stage. But we keep it live. I, I think it will it will still be fine and it will gain some popularity among some clients. So we will keep it. Just to make clear, this is an API solution. So all the content would go to Chinese servers. Yes, okay. so... So you. just folks, bear in mind, if you use this integration with Crowdin, it's an API solution and your context is not stored on Crowdin computers or Crowdin servers in Europe or in America or wherever, um, you know, our security standards are up. It's sent to China, to Chinese, to Chinese servers. Yeah, just bear in mind the current solution as mentioned by Konstantin Draj, is to download it, to have installed it on a, so, on a private server. And then, Andre, correct me if I'm wrong, you could get the same API key from your own servers and use DeepSeek you from your secure server. And yes, because that is why we love you. When you connect DeepSeek, we allow you to specify base URL. So your server, you will have unique URL for your server. So then you can use it privately as well. Excellent. Just to leave a quick mention and, and insight that XA Croc will be added like natively as a provider because currently it's an app, but okay. it will be added as a provider. Let's move on. In context initialization, more control over crowding in context initialization. What does it mean? What, what has changed? And can you show it uh, to our users on screen? how they can configure it. I can, for users, it's just one extra parameter that they add just to demonstrate what in context means at all. Here is in context. It's a tool that will allow you to do translations of your web application website directly on the site. You open it, you select your language. Let's say here we see that we are translating into Czech. So in context, we'll ask you what language you want to cover. Now here I type a translation and we can preview it live. When I save it, it will be saved to Crowdin project. And then when these translations are published and users will see exactly this translation on the site. So the tool is very great, but the thing that was lacking some there are so many sites and so many configurations they uh, some dynamic sites may take some time to load to display some texts and so on and earlier the problem especially with single page applications was that in context was opened on startup all the time so you did not have control here and right after you visit your site where in context is built in you can see that this pop-up is displayed 
and in context starts working. For crowd inside and for most of sites, it's okay. It's not causing any inconveniences, but if you are running some single page dynamic application, you as a developer, you may want to have some delay here before this in context will be opened. You need to give applications some time to load some resources. And that's what we do with this parameter that was mentioned here. We have to be developers to demonstrate it, but developers will definitely know what it means. It's just one line of the code that developers add, and they can now decide themselves when exactly this, uh, this JavaScript will start working and in context will become initialized. So that's the main point, and it means that now Crowdin is better prepared for single page applications, first of all. Okay. Let's move on. Next on our list is QA check. I'm not even sure if there is, there is not something we have to share, but in short, we improved handling of punctuation, first of all, in many languages, because it was always a challenge. You know how many languages are there on the market, and it's really a challenge to know, cover all these rules. So we, we spent enough effort. We, of course, even early it worked pretty well, but not that well. And we found some good ways to make it better. So now, ideally, users will get much less false positives during translation. And when you translate into Japanese or Arabic or other languages, you will get less QA issues that don't make sense. So if you see QA issue, it means that there is indeed a QA issue, but not you miss that out, but it, actually you added everything as it should. We always, I always love to show these things on screen. Where can people find these settings and where should they go to configure the QA application? Uh, it's already pre-configured um, in, in the system under uh, quality assurance. When we go to settings, quality assurance in any project that we have here, we have a variety of settings in crowd and enterprise you can also add your own you can build and connect your own custom qa checks but mainly it's about this punctuation qa checks and also numbers check these are qa checks that are enabled by default and earlier they not very helpful all the time for most of languages, it worked just by no complaints, but for some languages, it would work better. So that's what we did. We went through a lot of languages and tuned up punctuation. So here, what is also great for users is that you don't even have to change anything on your side. It should simply start working better for everyone. Okay, good, cool. Great. Uh, so try it out uh, again. It's uh, improved version of an existing feature. Yeah, you will get less these false alarms about. So less false positives for you. Andre. what else is in this newsletter we should not forget to talk about? Just small thing, but I find it personally very useful. Some users probably noticed that we've optimized editor look. So now it's more compact. Earlier, the, what, this top bar was pretty large. Now everything is much better organized and we have a new way how, can, how we display a progress per file in the editor. Earlier, there was a progress bar that almost no one knew about. Some users knew about it, they were using it, but it was not best solution. So now editor has a better enhanced, more slick view. And now it's better for anyone to check the progress of, um, of their work. Andre, we're through. I think we covered most of the cool stuff this month. We will discuss surely more of that in future new reports and a lot of other things we have seen today. Thanks a lot for explaining it again. You guys out there, leave us a note in the comments. If you have tried it, if you like it, if you don't like it, we are looking forward to hearing from you. See you next, next time in March with a February update. Thank you, Andre. Thank you. Bye-bye.